welcome to the mealworm uh, workshop. This is actually just the garage. Uh, and we've got a lot of stuff happening all at once here. What we want to talk about today is mealworms. So uh, we've had some problems with humidity and that was simply because we had too high a density. Uh, so we can see in this one here we've got a lot of mealworms and they're actually climbing the plastic which is why I've started to use lids again. It's a gecko. That's what's been ducking in and stealing mealworms. Little buggers. Um, we get a bit of moisture in the box, but what we've done is uh, thinned them out a bit. So we've lowered the density of mealworms per box, and we're finding that that's really helped with the with the moisture. Yeah, that's not wet in there at all. You can see this line here. This is the worm castings. So when this gets too high in the box, it's time to pull out the sieve and um, yeah, transfer these into uh, transfer the mealworms into a new box and re and reuse the bran. Uh, this sieves really nicely because this is just fine, stinky, acidic, like um, sour. What's the word I'm looking for? It stinks anyway, it's dust. This here is another box we did yesterday. You can see it's got a reasonable density in it. This one here, again, not a bad density, no humidity. This one here is another one we did. This one here, you can see there's a, a line here of the castings, but it's not too bad. This is because we actually redid this box yesterday and I obviously didn't get too close to the sides this one here you can see the casting on the bottom it's got quite a high density and this is a normal thing to see in your mealworms they they love the heat so they'll they'll all collect around the corners and the sides of your containers to to get the heat and this is a good sign because it means that uh, they're growing as fast as they can which means you've got about a three month life cycle instead of perhaps a six month life cycle. So that's, that's, that's really good. We've got a new beetle box because we wanted to strip the beetles out of the box they've been using because it's now uh, becoming productive. And there's not many beetles in the box now. We're just sort of keeping an eye out for some. It's gonna move some things around. I want to grab this box. I'm going to pause it for a sec. So this is the box I wanted to show you and it simply is the old beetle box. Um, we've still got a few beetles left so I was going to throw those into this and we'll get them in a minute. I'll go back into another box. I've got a few beetles actually that escaped me last time. So I'm just going to quickly sort this out, um, get the beetles out and put them in the other box because this is covered in eggs and so forth. This is where uh, we've got a lot of really small larvae coming and to save uh, from losing numbers due to cannibalism, uh, it's best to move the beetles as soon as they hatch to somewhere else. So I'm just going to do that now and we'll come back. So, back with the beetle box, we've had a bit of a problem with moths. But that, that's where you've got all this sort of webby type stuff here. Uh, and it's very difficult to control the moths uh, at this stage. Um, so you just have to put up with them. They're not, they're not going to hurt your mealworm um, colony at all. Uh, and once you get a high density of worms, they'll actually eat the moths. They're pretty, pretty voracious. So I've just sorted out some beetles and I'm just going to put those into the other box.
we're just using sweet potato. We just slice this up like this. So I like to keep lots and lots of fresh vegetables in the, the box. Because this is a hatching box. Um, and we've got, this is probably the, the oddest box I have. I've got, um, I've got pupae that are about to become beetles and I've got lots of eggs hatching. So this box is really out of sync with the rest of the farm. Uh, there's nothing I can really do with that. I just have to uh, wait and hopefully uh, all the eggs that are in here will hatch and um, and I'll just have to keep sorting the beetles and, and we'll be doing this until this box is kind of in sync with the rest of the farm. So here we are with the, with the, the new beetle box. Remember we had to change beetle boxes because we still had beetles and larvae about to become beetles along with eggs and really, really tiny, freshly hatched mealworms uh, all in the one box, which is not good. That's just a recipe for cannibalism. So we've put some new beetles in here. I've dropped a bit of vegetable in here. I think that might be too much, actually. I think just those two is enough. Just going to put a lid on this. Now, the reason lids are so important here is that we have hundreds of little gecko lizards that roam this shed. Uh, these types of sheds are not sealed from the outside. Uh, it, you, anything can just come straight in under the tin. Uh, so it's a bit of an issue. We need to have lids. So I'm going to put the beetle box back. Okay, so there's the box closed up again. Vegetables inside. Uh, this is a typical box that I do. I put the air holes around the outside with a drill. Sometimes I run some down the middle, depends how much time I've got. Okay, so I just added a bit more, a bit of sweet potato to this one. As you can see, it's got quite a high density of mealworms. It, they're probably one or two stages away at most from turning to beetles. Uh, the size of the mealworms in this box are fairly consistent. There's a lot of them. Uh, this is pretty high density. Um, but I'm going to keep an eye on it and we're going to see what happens. If, if I need to, the humidity gets up, then I can thin this box out to make use of another one. So we can use more boxes. That's okay. So here's another box. And although it doesn't look like there's much activity, you can see by this, the layer of husks on the top, that there's a lot of actual mealworm activity in here when we brush this aside we can see that it's kind of comes alive a bit just got to keep an eye out there's a few dead beetles in here as this was a beetle box at one stage see it's got quite a reasonable density of mealworms so we're just going to drop some more food in there besides this apple which there's not much left of <laughs> Just going to quickly do that. Okay, so there we go. We've just added a little bit of sweet potato, and that should do for about four or five days, I'd say. We'll just keep an eye on that one too. So I'll put that back up on the rack. So this is the last box I'm doing today. My back has given in. Um, this is a really good thing to do if you're on disability. Um, if you've got injury, you're sick, you have trouble working, Insect farming is actually low intensity, uh, almost zero carbon footprint. So this is a really good way to make a buck. Um, this farm is about six months from being commercial. So we just added the last of the vegetables I brought out today to this bin. The rest of the bins are okay. Just gonna pause this. Okay, so just Looking at the mealworm farm, what we have here is most of the boxes are consistent. Um, a few, they're all kind of round about medium, working their way up to large, except for the two previous beetle boxes. Um, really, uh, the beetle box we had running, uh, which now, all the, I've been taking all the live beetles out, it's got 
uh, mealworms in all different phases from eggs to uh, very, very small hatchings to larvae that are about to turn into beetles. So that's not a really good box to have because you really don't want all different life cycles of insects in there because what I risk happening is a little bit of cannibalism and we don't want that. So that box is just for sorting and there's a separate beetle box and there's not a great deal of substrate in the second beetle box because all I want them to do is lay eggs and I'm going to go out and get them a milk carton, sorry not a milk carton, an egg carton. I'm going to go get them an egg carton because they like that. They like to climb over that. They like to lay their eggs on it and so forth. Uh, but they will lay their eggs uh, on the bottom of the box or in the brand anyway. Uh, I just forgot to bring some egg cartons out today. But you can see um, how we're going. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, that's right and we've got uh, four more there and we've got the lids ready to go and this will probably keep me going uh, for another couple of months um, and then we're going to have to expand dramatically so once all these mealworms start changing into beetles all of these will be beetle boxes um, and we're going to have to triple what we've got here and start spreading out so the the next life cycle um, or the one after will be when we when we harvest I wasn't planning on harvesting until we had at least 1.5 ton of mealworm so that's what we should have when all of these mealworms reach uh, reach their maturity um, space is becoming a bit of a problem but it's not not so bad uh, it will be in winter though. This is Queensland, we're in the summer, so the mealworms are really enjoying the heat now. Uh, during winter we had these boxes in the garage. Um, if I had to put this in the garage now, I'd be really struggling with space. I'd have to move my car out. Um, but that would be worth it. So this is the mealworm farm. And uh, as part of a series, I've been putting, this will be the third video on mealworms now. The reason I'm sort of doing this is I wanted to show you that all of this started with the purchase of 10 mealworms for $10 from a pet store. And this was just out of, it was a curiosity project. I saw a friend was doing it for their kid and it kind of appealed to me and I thought, well, I'll just buy 10 mealworms and throw them in some bran and put them in the back of the cupboard and out of curiosity see what happens because I kind of was attracted to the math that one mealworm turned into a beetle which laid 500 eggs which grew into 500 mealworms and so forth. Um, that was kind of appealing so that was technically I was going to get 5,000 mealworms so it didn't really turn out that I ended up with about 5,000 mealworms. I'd say I probably ended up with probably about 500. Um, but like I said, that was a small container. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing. They didn't have enough moisture and so forth. So now I'm starting to get the hang of it. We're on the mealworm forums in Facebook and we're taking lots of advice. We're watching lots of videos and we're actually applying a little bit of science to this as well. So uh, it means I've had to study some entomology and study the life cycles and so forth, um, which is turning out really well. And a lot of it is experimenting. Like I said, we tried working without lids, but we ended up with lots and lots of really healthy lizards in the garage and um, missing quite a lot of beetles and mealworms. Uh, you'd be surprised how much they can actually eat. So I wanted to show you something else. So I just want to show you how I do the mealworm boxes. So the storage boxes we use just have these lids like this. They're very thin, not very strong. That one's got a crack in it. Uh, we'll tape that. There's a broken one there. We'll tape that up before we start using it. But we need to put air holes in them, and the quickest way to put air holes is to drill. 
So we have a drill with a small end on it. Now it's too small for the beetles or the mealworms to get through, but I didn't want to go micro small because that would mean I'd need to drill more holes um, to get ventilation. So the quickest way is to have all these lids all stacked together. Put the drill here, my leg up here. I'm actually doing three at once. Uh, I find four is about the maximum that the, the length of the drill can handle safely. Um, otherwise you have to you know, push the drill right down onto the plastic and 